Dr. Lori Arvizo Alvord, who is our commencement speaker today. Dr. Alvord is the Associate Dean of Student Affairs and Admissions and Professor of Surgery at the University of Arizona College of Medicine in Tucson, Arizona. She also holds an appointment as Associate Faculty at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, Center for American Indian Health. Dr. Alvord earned her undergraduate degree from Dartmouth College and received her Doctorate of Medicine at Stanford University School of Medicine and did her residency in general surgery at Stanford University Hospital where she was chief resident. Dr. Alvord practiced for six years with the Indian Health Service at Gallup, New Mexico, providing health care to members of the Navajo and Zuni tribes before joining the faculty at Dartmouth Medical School. Her research is focused on surgical outcomes and health disparities in Native American populations. Additional interests include Native American health, Native American philosophies of healing and the healing properties of ceremonies, integrative medicine, and the creation of healing environments. Dr. Albert has also received a number of honorary degrees and awards including Outstanding Women in Medicine Award from the University of Missouri Kansas City School of Medicine and the Governor's Award for Outstanding Women from the State of New Mexico. Dr. Albert is a member of the Navajo Tribe and of the Tsinajini, Ponderosa Pine, and Ashihidine Salt Clans and was raised in Crown Point, New Mexico. Her autobiography entitled The Scalpel and the Silver Bear published in 1999 tells the story of her journey from the reservation to become a surgeon and her work to combine Navajo philosophies of healing with Western medicine. Lori is married to Jonathan Albert and has two children, Cody and Caitlin. Cody is a senior in college and was just accepted to Yale where he will pursue pre-med studies. Good choice. Please welcome Dr. Lori Arviso Albert. Thank you so very much, Dr. Lee. It is an honor and a privilege to speak to you today. Um, and I am just overcome with the sense of community here that you have and the, um, the, the people that run your school have been tremendously um, fantastic since I've been here and just very um, amazing and wonderful. And when can I come here? I, I want to come here. Um, no, <laughs> I just got to Arizona. Don't tell them I said that. Um, <laughs> I wanted to uh, introduce some of my family who are in attendance today. Um, my personal family, uh, my sisters and mother, uh, are scattered all over. They're in Indiana and Alaska and Idaho. Uh, but uh, my son is here today with us, and um, my husband's family is actually from Bountiful. And so we were married actually in Pinecrest, bed and, bed and breakfast up in the mountains, and uh, so we feel very much connected here. And uh, so if, um, if family could rise when I give your names, please. Um, we have uh, my husband Jonathan's mother, Kathleen Dennis, her husband, Steve Ober, or Steve not here today, Steve's not here today. Um, his sister, Meredith Kaylee, her husband, Michael, and their children, Cole and Adela. Steve's daughter, Ann Ober, thank you. And her guest, Yolanda Francisco Nez. Judging by that name, I think you're Danae. And of course, Christopher Kodiak Alvord, my son. Thank you. Yat A. Lori Arviso Alvord, Yenishe, Tsinajene do Ashidene, Bashish Chin. What I said was hello, my name is Lori Arviso Alvord, and I am from the clans of Sinajene. Uh, which is uh, also the name of our eastern sacred mountain, Sinajin, uh, which is Blanca Peak in, uh, near Alamosa, Colorado. And um, Ashihitne is uh, the salt people. So those are the clans we come from. And uh, I was raised in Tisuze, which is Crown Point, New Mexico. It's a really very tiny town in uh, the Four Corners area. 
It is known for very, very little. Uh, it is called the Gateway to Chaco Canyon. Chaco is the Anasazi ruins, and uh, uh, it has Navajo rug auctions. So people who like to buy Navajo rugs come into Crown Point and every three months and buy rugs that are now going for quite a bit. So. Um, uh, I came from a very humble background. Um, sometimes this feels in extremely surreal to me. Uh, having grown up in a Navajo community, parents did not uh, have college degrees. Uh, I sometimes wonder how in the world I ever got here. And, um, you know, I, I have really had an amazing, an amazing life so far. Uh, to be um, trained in surgery it was fantastic, but I also have an interest in psychotherapy, has done a year of um, psychotherapy training with Boston Psychoanalytic Society and Institute, uh, have um, uh, been able to, to be an author and, uh, and uh, write and follow a passion for writing and follow the, um, the amazing journey into integrative medicine and um, into native traditional medicine, which uh, is, is quite fascinating, frankly. Um, also was part of a championship team uh, up in New Hampshire, uh, the Brunettes hockey team. I do play ice hockey, and uh, we won a couple of years ago. Uh, it's just a B league, but hey, you know. And um, my husband has a, also has, this is, I'm telling you these things actually because I want you to not stereotype Navajos and not stereotype women. Um, frankly, I'm scared as hell up here, but surgeons aren't allowed to be scared, so uh, I'll just hold that in there, right? So, <laughs> uh, my husband has a, a crack sailing team. They, uh, if you're from the Midwest, they won the Chicago Mac last year in the Trimoran division. And, uh, have won uh, numerous season trophies for the New England Multi-Hole Association. I was um, pleased to be navigator and tactician for that team and um, have had a great time sailing in Buzzards Bay, Newport, uh, uh, Martha's and, um, and uh, Nantucket and those areas. So uh, we have had an extremely rich, rich life. Uh, and of course, Cody is now going to outclass me and go to Yale. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, Cody got a perfect 800 score on one of his SATs, so he is not a slacker. Uh, but I will quit embarrassing you now, Cody. So um, He is named Kodiak after our clan, which is one of the bear clans. There are four. The Sinajeni are one of the bear clans. And so um, we, um, we are very connected to our, to our tribe and people. As I, as I said, I am... Uh, you know, so, so very uh, surprised and delighted to have been invited here and to be able to have lived a life that I never would have imagined leaving Crown Point as a high school student. Uh, the only thing that I still really, really want to do is be Iron Man. Um, I, you know, but, and, and I realized that your graduate programs had nothing about Iron Man robotics, and so I just thought I would, you know, See if you might not consider that, and then I could come over and I could like head that and no, okay. So, um, I wanted to talk to you today primarily about healing. And when I first started to get this talk together, it was about uh, about the healing of the um, ancient healers, the uh, shaman, the medicine men, and what they bring and how they can inform our lives. Um, but as life would have it, uh, some other things happened along the way uh, before that. And so um, a few weeks ago, uh, it, they, it brought to mind to me the, the amazing power of medicine, the amazing uh, field that you're entering. And I have to say some things about that now. Um, both these, these comments are addressed both to the MD community and the graduate community because you're both very, very involved in what I'm, what I'm gonna talk about. When, when the, the, uh, the product of the training affects someone personally, it becomes something that you never, never forget. And uh, so a few weeks ago, um, my sister's child uh, was, uh, uh, brought into the emergency room with a severe asthma attack. And um, they did all their usual things, you know, they did all their nebulizers and their treatments and, 
and there's steroids, and uh, he was not moving air. And um, they kept trying, and uh, he got really tired, and uh, they put, had to put him, they had to intubate him and put him on a ventilator. Now, if you're a parent, or a sister of a parent, uh, there's really very little that's more terrifying than to have your child on a mechanical ventilation in an intensive care unit when he was kind of well the day before. And uh, we were really, really fortunate. Uh, you know, the pediatrician that noticed he was, he was sick enough to go to the ER and sent him there helped him. The emergency room staff that were fast and active and really um, very hands-on in getting, getting everything he needed were helping him. The intensivists, when he got to the ICU, were fantastic. The pulmonologist who managed his care was um, unbelievable in, in his intelligence. It was a really, really tricky type of thing when you start to think about how you handle a child and uh, you don't, you know, the pressures were actually a little high. He got that subcutaneous emphysema. It's like all those things, you know, you hear about. Um, yeah, he, he was incredible and he was very um, in touch with family. He was talking to the family all the way through it. Uh, Keevan was only on the ventilator for four weeks, but, I mean four weeks, uh, for 24 hours, uh, but he came off rapidly, but uh, the scare was just intense. And the, the appreciation I have for the physicians that cared for him and their fields, and for the people who did the research to allow the physicians to do their job, the people who developed the ventilators, the people who developed the medications, the people who understand lung physiology, all those people, all in, in the fields you're going into, right? And then, if that wasn't enough, um, a week ago Wednesday, I uh, had surgery. Uh, I had early cholecystitis and had a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Uh, I am really fortunate I would not be standing here in front of you if the technology for surgery, for laparoscopic work, uh, and, and all of the surgeons and their training and the antibiotics and all of it came together to give me maybe a 40-minute operation, home the same day, doing a little work the following day. Yes, I'm a workaholic and Friday, half day back on Monday and Tuesday, full day, Wednesday, Thursday, dinner with you guys Friday night, and here I am. That is something, that is something that our, our, our fields can do that kind of a thing, isn't it? It's just so amazing. And so I, I just uh, have um, a deep, deep appreciation now at a different level than I did before for what these fields are capable of and how we help people, how much and how we save lives. I used to get such appreciation from some of my patients when I'd operate on them and I would never internalize it because I was always thinking in the back of my mind, um, you know, thank you, but I'm just doing my job. I'm trained to do this and this is my job and I'm just doing my job. Now it feels, now it feels different. Now it feels deeper somehow. Maybe because when you're the patient, you get it. You know. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, really uh, appreciate and thank all the people who have contributed in all your ways, whether you are a research investigator, whether you have trained medical students, whether you are a practitioner, you um, you work in very special ways, and uh, just want to give you great thanks. So now I'm going to go back to the traditional talk I was going to give before all of that. Uh, and and um, I promise you it won't be very long, and uh, I know uh, when I'm sitting at graduations and I'm itching to get my hood, the thing between me and getting my hood and, and in celebrating is those long speeches, right? So I get it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll try to behave here. Um, as a surgeon in my professional life, 
I am able to bring healing to my patients, drawing together the best of medical research and surgical innovation gained over the last century of, med of medical progress. But I also carry with me another kind of healing, which comes from my people, the Diné. This healing cannot be dated. It is ancient. It includes concepts of healing that are quite different from the terms that one usually connates in the halls of medical schools. Part of my vision in life, though, is to combine what is best from both worlds, as different as they are. When I finished my training to be a general surgeon, I became aware that although I had been trained to be a good doctor and a good surgeon, I had not been trained to be a healer. I think I lost some of my humanity over the course of a surgical residency. Residencies can change you. So I want to re remind you, please don't remember who you are and don't lose yourself in this process. I decided I needed to learn to be both a surgeon and a healer, and I went back to, he to the healers of my own tribe. Sorry, iPads. To my own tribe for answers, and I found far more than I thought possible. The people in my tribe still practice the ceremonies that have been with us since ancient times. Within them lies a blueprint for how to live an enriched, healthy life. The foundation for the ceremonies rests on a central spiritual premise that all things in the universe, including humans, are created by a life force which is within all things and connects all things. We believe we are not technically separate from one another or anything else in the world. I realized that something about the keeping of knowledge, Western civilization has millions of libraries filled with books, and these books hold the knowledge accumulated over time. But the question is, what books should we read? What is the most important knowledge? Cultures with oral traditions did not have libraries, but they had ceremonies. And I think that ceremonies are the distillation of all the very most important knowledge, and that is why they are so important and special. When Europeans first encountered Native American cultures, they dismissed much of it as inferior. Indigenous religions were considered primitive compared to other theologies, but there is a connectedness and a complexity within the ceremonies that mirrors that of the universe in which we live. And in my tribe, the Navajo, ceremonies are blueprints for how to live a life that is whole and balanced, a life that is connected to all of creation, and a life that, liver, that honors all living things. Our healing and our spirituality are one and the same. Our ceremonies teach that all wisdom and all life arises from one source, Sa'a Nagai Pik Ehojo. It is the name of our creator, a unifying force that is within all things, connects all things, and creates all things. This phrase is also translated as to live in one, one's life with deep beauty, hojo. Healers, medicine men in our tribe have described it as universal mind, indicating that the universe is the source of our creation and that the universe has a consciousness and that we are part of this consciousness. And because it was went within all things, we as people are not separate from other humans and not separate from the rest of our world. The ceremonies teach us to live in hojo. It is a word that embodies a combination of beauty, harmony, balance, and peace. It includes the teaching that humans should honor and respect other human beings. When practiced, this life way is capable of enhancing family and workplace stability, and strong interpersonal relationships help build strong families and communities. By the way, I am very aware of the strong family sense here. I understand this class has like the highest baby count. Is that what I heard? Yeah, yeah. So your, your families, there we go. Our ceremonies and our culture also help us develop healthy minds and bodies. Ceremonies encourage this process through physical and mental purification. Hojo includes thinking about the future in a good way. It, it, it's very similar to what we call positive thinking in Western culture. Ceremonies empower the mind through purification and through visualizing the future in a positive way. An attempt to live in harmony and reduce conflict helps reduce stress, and reducing stress 
has very healthy side effects. The field of psychoneuroimmunology, the mind's influence on the body, or mind-body medicine now called, is also shown that stress and depression are capable of suppressing the immune system, which interferes with our ability to fight infections and defend against cancers. Ceremonies help us to heal, protect, and empower the mind, and that in turn helps reduce stress and helps our immune systems to fight disease. Thomas Hatotli, one of our medicine men, says this, the mind is the foremost energy that we have as humans. Ceremonies are done to empower the mind, and if that can happen, the rest should follow in terms of physical healing. It will be important as we move forward in medicine to understand that our patients' minds and their mind states are every bit as important at, to the process of healing as the attention and treatments we give to our bodies. I wanted to mention too a quote from Wayne Dyer who writes that research has shown that the simple act of kindness directed toward another improves their functioning of their immune system and stimulates production of serotonin in the, both the recipient of the kindness and the person extending the kindness. I imagine this, that kindness extended and received and observed beneficially impacts the physical health and feelings of every person involved. And also offer this quote from Robert Kennedy, who said this, um, because we, we talk so much about the importance of the energies that pass between different people and how our energies influence one another and can help us to keep each other strong and healthy. He says, each time that a person stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, since they send forth a tiny ripple of hope, and crossing each other, these ripples form a million different centers of energy and daring. These ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. As we learn more about how healing works, that it isn't just about the medicines that we give, each, give to our patients, and it isn't just about the surgery that we provide them. We have other dimensions and domains of healing. Um, interestingly enough, healing comes from our animals. Healing comes from our favorite songs. Healing comes from deep love. Art has also emerged as a healing force. When the mind encounters certain forms of art, the joy, the delight, the awe it experiences is capable of also relieving stress and counteracting depression and may be able to help the immune system. Our ceremonies include layers and layers of art woven together and integrated from the beauty of the prayers and the chants and the images they evoke to the powerful rhythms of the drums and the music that carries the words forward, art moves through ceremonies as both the background and the foreground, as both the earth and the air. Art is expressed in paintings made with sand, sand paintings. The yeas, the kachinas, our spiritual guardians are represented in the sand painting images Visual images of the stories that the ceremonies describe are within the sand paintings. In the same way, the dancers of the ceremonies represent the spiritual beings and the animal guardians described by the ceremonies. Headdresses are made of deer skin, buffalo skin, eagle feathers, spruce branches, buckskin clothing and moccasins are worn, and even the smallest objects used in ceremony are forms of art, medicine bundles, that contain corn pollen bags, prayer feathers, small carved animal spiritual guarding, guardians, our totems, and the earth from the four sacred mountains. The combined effect is a tapestry that deeply endorses the belief that art has the power to heal. The concept of healing extends to the health and healing of all things as well, not just humans, but to our communities and to our natural world because everything is deeply interconnected. Ceremonies are often performed for healing. Many of the forces of healing have already been described, 
These principles are now being used by other healing systems as well. Western medicine is waking up to realize that healing exists beyond procedures and medications. Studies have started to show the power of other healing realms such as support group therapy, that's people coming together to help each other, music therapy, healing in the arts, animal therapy, massage therapy, and so on. The research is still in its infancy, but points to the concept that healing can be inf influenced by multiple forces within our lives and that we may use these interconnections to achieve healing. I believe that healing environments can be created that incorporate many aspects of ceremonies. Among these are creating a space of trust and deep support for patients, developing an environment for staff that is supportive and encourages building teams that have good working relationships and developing space that's vis visually beautiful and very comfortable for patients and their families. We have begun to move away from cold, sterile medical surroundings and of the past, but we still have worlds of healing that are waiting to be included in medical models of the future. We soon may understand that the elements of art, ceremony, sustainability, and healing are woven deeply and interconnected. The cultures of Native people encourage the recognition of interconnectedness, a systems thinking interpre interpretation of how to heal that includes humans but also the rest of the world. Hang on, baby, almost done. <laughs> Balance, harmony, and wholeness are not part of most surgical training programs, most surgical training programs. But the best surgeons don't operate on gallbladders or spleens or hearts. They operate on the people that own them. People with lives, children, baby, and their own beliefs. And though a surgical procedure focuses on a single organ, when I operate, I always try to remember, I am opening a person, a human being. I am putting my hands into a sacred place. I am putting my hands inside their body. I try to remain aware of the whole person, body, mind, and spirit, and the intense complexity and harmony of their entire being. Caring for our patients is a very profound privilege. We have license to travel to a country no other person can visit, to the inside of someone else's body, a sacred and a holy place. To perform surgery is to move in a place where spirits reside. It is a place that one should not enter if they cannot enter with Hojo. And even if you do not believe that the human body is sacred, remember that it is very, very special, especially to the person who owns it. It should be tended with great respect and great care. The medicine men tell us that the air we breathe travels all around the earth and has existed on the planet for millions of years. Breathing connects you to the rest of the world in this way. The words that move out from your lips, these same words move from within you and travel out into the world, and they can bring healing through the care with which you speak to patients, through the gentleness with which you speak, the words that might be hard for them to hear. Your words bear your mark. How we touch our patients is also very important. The wisdom from our tribe says that our hands are very special. Universal winds, the part of the life force I described earlier, are said to enter through the whirls of the palms, the fingerprints, and the feet and the top of the head. Our hands are special. They are our ambassador, ambassadors to the rest of the world. They carry our goodwill. Your hands will touch many patients over a lifetime, and they will serve you well when you can touch your patient with great care and gentleness. I wanted to leave you with a, a Navajo prayer as a, as a blessing for you. So if you want to receive this blessing, close your eyes, hold your hands out and, and receive that. And um, you, you know, it comes from a very, very ancient lineage of healers. House made of dawn, house made of evening light, house made of dark cloud, house made of male rain, House made of dark mist, house made of female rain, house made of pollen, house made of grasshoppers. Dark cloud is at the house's door. The trail out of it is dark cloud. The jagged lightning stands high upon it. 
Restore my feet for me. Restore my legs for me. Restore my body for me. Restore my mind for me. Restore my voice for me. This very day, take your energy and heal me. Happily, I go forth. Happily, inside me, it becomes cool. Inside me, feeling cool, may I walk. No longer sore, may I walk. Impervious to pain, may I walk. With lively feelings, may I walk. As it used to be long ago, may I walk. Happily, may I walk. Happily, with abundant dark clouds, may I walk. Happily, with abundant rain showers, may I walk. Happily, with abundant green plants, may I walk. Happily, on a trail of pollen, may I walk. Happily, may I walk. As it used to be long ago, may I walk. May it be beautiful before me. May it be beautiful behind me. May it be beautiful below me. May it be beautiful above me. May it be beautiful all around me. In beauty, it is finished. In beauty, it is finished. Hajana Haslin, Hajana Haslin, Hajana Haslin, Hajana Haslin. Thank you.